Mondays with Mark Allen. Welcome back, everybody. Today, I want to talk about the Super Shoe. As you know, they have revolutionized the speed that people can go when they race, giving them instantaneous uh, improvement. I actually tried a pair of these a while ago, the Super Shoe from Nike, and literally, I thought if I had these shoes when I was competing at Ironman, I would be, I don't know, five, seven minutes faster on the marathon. No difference in my fitness. Clearly, an advantage. So. As you know, Ironman and a number of other aspects of the sport have, have regulated the, how, how much of this advantage you can actually put into a shoe. And some people are like, cool, that way we don't have to worry about if somebody else has like the next level and I can't get it and everything's a little more fair. Other people are saying, you know what, why shouldn't innovation be available and we can just have equipment that helps us to go as fast as we possibly can. I have a couple thoughts on that. I've got thoughts on just about everything. Anyway, I look at it this way. You know, there are regulations in cycling on, in terms of how much aerodynamic stuff we can have on our bikes. And ultimately, a bike, n no matter how unaerodynamic it is, it's still going to be faster than a human being could go on their own, right? If you're talking about going along on the flats on a road somewhere. So, as far as cycling, Maybe we should just have like a carte blanche. You can just have as much stuff as you want, as much advantage as you can gain. However, when you talk about swimming and running, those sports human beings can actually do on their own. You can swim on your own. You can throw yourself in Kailua Bay and go for a swim. So regulations there in Kona, you cannot have swimsuits that have flotation. They can't be neoprene. Kind of a good rule, right? I mean, that way it's like at some point you got to say maybe you know what, a human being can go a certain speed on their own and maybe you have some skin suits that give you a little bit of an advantage, but at some point it's like, how much advantage do you want to give? Okay, so swimming, there's a, there's a, there's a, a cutoff point for it. We say no neoprene. Now we're at the same stage with running. How much stuff can we stick in a shoe before it's like, okay, why not stick giant springs on the shoe? Think of it this way. How fast could a human being run without a shoe? Hmm. I don't know if you've ever done it, but running without a shoe, at least for short distances, if you're not used to running without shoes, is faster than running with a shoe. So ultimately, probably for years, shoes, even though they allow us to run frequently, run longer distances without getting injured and all that kind of stuff, ultimately you're running slower because you have that shoe on. But at some point now, we have a certain advantage that maybe brings back the exact same sort of biomechanical advantage that a human being has over all other animals to be able to run super long distances pretty fast for a long period of time. But at some point, I think you just got to say, you know what, that's enough. Let's just cut it off. <laughs> I think they actually, Ironman and World Triathlon, did a good job of saying, okay, you know what, Gustav Eden's marathon last year in Kona was amazing. The shoe was thicker than we're going to regulate now or, or, or allow now. So let's see what happens this year. But in, in any case, I think the, the, the playing field will be level for all athletes of all abilities as long as those shoes are available, like they have said for a certain period of time publicly before anybody can even use them in the competitive arena. Let me know what you think. I think it's kind of a good regulation. Mondays with Mark Allen. We'll see you next week.